Hey everybody, uh, this lesson is modeling arithmetic sequences from a description. So it's just more of what we've done. It's the second part of 4.3 in our textbook. So actually it's in our workbook right here. Hey, if you guys can, would you guys click like and if you haven't yet, subscribe. And don't forget all your lessons, uh, if you don't know this yet, can be found at MrMathBlog.com. Let me show you that link real quick. So here's MrMathBlog.com right here. So if you go across, and we are the Integrated Math 1. So we'd go into this one right here. And then uh, if you scroll down, I'm going to be loading it right underneath this one where it says 4.3 Part 1. We are doing 4.3 Part 2. All right, so let's get going here. So let's construct an explicit rule and function notation for the, this is called arithmetic sequence. Remember, I'm doing that now. Uh, represented and use it to solve the problem. Excuse me. So here's number one. The odometer on a car reads 34,240 on day one. That's the mileage on a car. That's what, you know, right underneath your, um, uh, if you're driving, uh, your speedometer right there, if there's a little box that has numbers that tells you how many miles your car has on it. So every day the car is driven at 57 miles. Okay, so this is our first term, F1, and this is our common difference, D, right here. Okay, this pattern continues. What will the odometer read on day 15? This would be F of 15 right there. All right, so uh, the odometer reads this on day one. Here's our F1, 34,240. And every day the car is driven this many miles, 57 miles. So that's D right there. All right, so write an explicit rule and function notation for the arithmetic sequence and use it to find, uh, we're using it to find at the 15th term, so F of 15, which is the odometer reading on the 15th day right there, okay? All right, so there's our groovy formula. Hopefully you've made it your friend, f of n, which is our nth term equals your first term. That's what this says, plus d times n minus 1. This is our 57. Okay, this is that 34,240. So that's what we're going to plug in right there. Okay, and then we crank it out, and then we're, oh, we're going to find uh, our 15th term. So here we're going to plug in 15, 15 minus 1. This is going to be 14 right there. Okay, and then 57 times 14 will do first, and we get 798. And then when we add that to 34,240, there's our magic number, 35,308. So on day 15, the odometer will show 35,308 miles. Okay, so using arithmetic sequence, uh, using an arithmetic sequence is reasonable because the number of miles increased on the same day is, uh, is the same amount each day. So it's an arithmetic sequence when it increases. So this one had increased 57, then plus 57, then plus 57, plus 57. So if it increases the same amount, then we'd use an arithmetic sequence uh, formula on this, okay? So by rounding to estimate, so we round um, that 34,240 to 34,200. And here, this was our 57. It rounded to uh, 60. So if we just did a quick rounding right here, so uh, 6 times uh, 14, well, 6 times 7 is, is 42, so 6 times 14 is uh, double 42, or 84. So 60 times 14 is this 840 right there. So if we just added those together, we get 35,040, which is close to our, our estimate right there. So 35,038 miles was a reasonable answer. I think it was uh, uh, 308 miles, right? No, 38, three, sorry. I'm thinking uh, from prior. Uh, anyway, so uh, Ruby sign, here's another one. Ruby sign for a frequent flyer program. She receives uh, 3,400 frequent flyers miles for the first round trip she takes and 1,200 frequent <laughs> flyer miles, hard twister, uh, miles for an additional round trip. So how many of these FFs, I'll call them, miles will Ruby have uh, in a fine five round trip, okay? So our first term is this guy right here and our common difference is 1,200. We keep adding 1,200 after every one, okay? So there's our groovy formula and then we just plug in, uh, here's our first term, here's our D right here, okay? And then we're gonna look for F of five. So F of five, this is gonna be five minus one or four right there. Okay, so there's that right there. So F of 5 is going to be 3,400 plus 1,200 times 4. 12 times 4 is 48, so add these two zeros. It's 48 with two zeros. So when we add 48 and 34, we get 82, so 8,200. Okay, so after five-round trip, Ruby will have 8,200 FF miles. I'm not going to try saying that again. All right, let's answer a few questions right here. Don't forget AS is 
arithmetic sequence. So I will just do the first two first, and we'll do the second two on, uh, when we get down with this. What domain values usually make sense for arithmetic sequence model that represents real world, real, <laughs> real world situations? Okay, well the domain values are those inputs, and we always start with one, and then two, and then three. So the domain is a set of now our term numbers or our position numbers, our first position, our second position. That last one we wanted to find the fifth position. So those domain values are always positive whole numbers. One, two, three, four, as many as we need to get up to. So when given a graph of an arithmetic sequence that, uh, that represents a real world, world situation, how can we determine the first term and the common difference in order uh, to write a model for the sequence? Okay, well the first term is the y coordinate of a point that has an x coordinate of 1. So remember when we had those graphs and they gave us an xy point. Well, we look for that one comma something, and so that first term is that something right there. Okay, and it follows the coordinate of x equals one. And then to find the common difference, when we know the difference between uh, the consecutive terms is constant, we just find the difference between any two consecutive terms. Okay, righty minus lefty, or top minus bottom if it's in a graph. Okay, here's the other two questions. So, what are some ways to justify our answer uh, when creating an arithmetic sequence model for a real world situation to solve problems? All right, we can say something like this. Uh, we can make sure that the situation is accurately represented by the growth pattern of an arithmetic sequence where it just keeps adding the same amount. So, plus 57, plus 57 and so on. It just kept adding the same amount. And we can use estimating like we did in that last one to make sure that our answer is reasonable. So you can do a quick estimation job and then see if it's reasonable. And uh, those are a couple of ways we can justify our answer. Alright, so how can we construct a model for a real-world situation that involves an arithmetic sequence? Well, we can ex uh, construct our explicit rule, our formula, f of n is f of 1 plus d times n minus 1 for the sequence in a function notation and then specify uh, reasonable domain values right there. Okay, all right. And if you're in my class, I would probably assign you that as your homework. And if you guys can, if you haven't yet, would you guys click like and subscribe and take care of you guys.